subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 8th of February. South Korea's foreign minister calls Indian counterpart expresses regret on Hyundai Pakistan's Kashmir post. Faulty policies of PM Imran's government paralyzed Pakistan's economy, says PDM chief Fazlur Rahman. And Taliban rejects UN report of foreign terror groups in Afghanistan. And now for all the details, South Korea's Foreign Minister Chung Yi-yong called Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar and expressed regret after the Pakistani partner of the country's automobile giant Hyundai posted controversial remarks on Kashmir, commemorating what it described as the sacrifices of Kashmiris struggling for self-determination. India's Foreign Ministry also released a statement saying that it summoned South Korea's ambassador to express displeasure. It was highlighted that this matter concerned India's territorial integrity on which there could be no compromise, it said. India says Pakistan supports an armed insurrection against New Delhi's rule in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan denies the charge and says it only provides diplomatic and moral support for the Kashmiri people. Earlier on Tuesday, Hyundai also issued an apology over the unauthorized tweet after the row triggered a backlash by Indians. Hyundai is India's second largest car seller, selling close to half a million vehicles in the country in the last fiscal year and exporting over a million units, making it India's largest car exporters. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said his government's efforts to fight the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years led to high economic growth and middling inflation as he defended his policies amid protest by the opposition. The PM said despite the pandemic, India's economy was growing at the fastest pace among major economies. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi defended his government's efforts to fight the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years, saying on Tuesday they led to high economic growth and middling inflation, unlike the situation in some advanced economies. Despite the pandemic, India's economy was growing at the fastest pace among major economies. While manufacturing incentives helped to bolster growth, Modi told the upper house of parliament in remarks that triggered opposition protests. The government has distributed free food grain to 800 million people during the pandemic while taking steps to tame inflation, the PM said, as he accused opposition parties of creating panic about the pandemic's impact. UPA ke samay, mangai, double digit shu rahi thi. UPA ke samay, double digit shu rahi thi. Aaj, हम एक मात्र बड़ी इकोनॉमी है जो हाई ग्रोथ और मीडियम इन्फ्लेशन अनुभव कर रहे हैं। Opposition's criticism of Modi's handling of the pandemic highlighted that India slipped last year to 101 among 116 nations on the Global Hunger Index from a previous ranking of 94, while many people face difficulties. P. Chidambaram, a senior Congress leader, blamed government policies for a rise in inflation and loss of jobs during the pandemic, besides widening income inequalities. And in news from Pakistan, an alliance of opposition parties, Pakistan Democratic Movement Chief Molana Fazlur Rahman lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan, led PTI government on Monday, and said that the faulty policies of the incompetent rulers had paralyzed the country's economy. Addressing a rally, Rahman blamed the government for mortgaging the central bank to the International Monetary Fund for loans. <laughs> Pakistan Democratic Movement of PDM Chief Malana Fazlur Rahman lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan led PTI government on Monday and said that the faulty policies of incompetent rulers had paralyzed the country's economy. 
Addressing a public meeting, Rahman said the federal government is mortgaging the State Bank of Pakistan to the International Monetary Fund for loans. The economies of Bangladesh and war-torn Afghanistan are doing better than Pakistan, he said. Rahman urged the gathering to oust the government in future elections if they wanted the country to be safe. अगर आपने तहरीक इंसाफ को और पीटीआई को वोट देना है तो फिर आप इस मुल्क को डबोने और तबाह करने में उनके साथ शरीक हो जाएंगे ऐसा तो नहीं करना ना इंशाला बिल्कुल भी नहीं करना पाकिस्तान इन्फ्लेशन रेट रोज टू थर्टीन परसेंट इन जनवरी फ्रॉम अयर अर्लियर द हाइस्ट इन टू ईयर्स राइजिंग फ्यूल एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कॉस एफ फोर इंक्रीजिंग प्रेशर ऑन द गवर्नमेंट एज इट ग्रेबल्स विद वाइडनिंग करंट अकाउंट डिफिसिट And moving on, an ongoing land acquisition drive by non-locals in Gilgit, Baltistan, to allegedly change the demography has left the residents of the illegally occupied region worried. They blame the move as part of Islamabad's deliberate attempts to expand its political control over the disputed territory. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan, have raised concern over a continuous land acquisition drive by mafias. who are illegally grabbing several acres of land and allegedly changing the demography of the illegally occupied region by selling it to non-locals they have accused pakistan government has been providing a no objection certificate to the land mafias as part of its anti native policies and vigorous attempts at expanding its political control over the disputed territory mafia sarmayedar log yahan ka be aake jo ज़मीनों का जो एक इन्होंने एक सिलसिला स्टार्ट किया है पूरा गिलगित बल्दिस्तान के अंदर खरीदने के लिए हम इसकी भरपूर हम मजम्मत करते हैं और हम ये समझते हैं कि गिलगित बल्दिस्तान के अंदर आके हम लीज पे ले लें और लीज पे लेके यहाँ पे बिजनेस कर सकते हैं हम इसकी मुखालफत नहीं करते हैं लेकिन जो यहाँ पर आके ज़मीनें ले अपने आप को इस इलाके के जो बाशिंदे बाशिंदों में शामिल होने की वो जो चक्कर है हम इसकी मुखालफत करते हैं There has also been continuous dissent against the existing land laws which allow government ownership over all barren land. Recently a massive protest was also held by locals over attempts by Pakistan army and the government to acquire hundreds of acres of land from local people to make deliberate demographic changes. And in news from Afghanistan, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan has rejected a recent UN report which claimed that the presence of foreign groups have increased in the war-torn nation after the collapse of the former administration in August last year. The report by the UN Security Council monitoring team said that there were no recent signs that the Taliban has taken steps to limit the activities of foreign terrorist fighters in the country. The Taliban government in Afghanistan has rejected a report by the UNSC monitoring team which claimed that the presence and activities of foreign insurgent groups have increased in the war-torn nation after the collapse of the foreign administration in August last year. The Taliban's foreign ministry in a statement on Monday said The Islamic Emirate deems such reports lacking evidence, documents and addresses neither in the interest of Afghanistan, the region or the world. The ministry further said that the Taliban regime has implemented its commitments laid out in 2020 Doha agreement and does not allow anyone to threaten any country from Afghanistan's territory. The report by the UN Security Council monitoring team said that there were no recent signs that the Taliban has taken steps to limit the activities of foreign terrorist fighters in the country. The report also questioned the Taliban's commitment under the Doha agreement to preventing international terrorist threats from having a foothold in Afghanistan and expressed concerns that foreign groups might find safe haven in Afghanistan. According to the report, slain al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden's son visited Afghanistan late last year. Reacting to this claim, the Taliban's deputy spokesperson Bilal Karimi said on Monday that no visit and no meeting between anyone happened. The report comes as February 15 marks 6 months since the Taliban swept to power in Afghanistan seizing the capital of Kabul. Foreign powers have been reluctant to recognize the Taliban administration while western nations led by the United States have frozen billions of dollars worth of Afghan banking assets and cut off development funding that once formed the backbone of Afghanistan's economy. 
An animated feature film named Flea, directed by Danish filmmaker Jonas Pohar Rasmussen, tells the story of an Afghan refugee who shares his hidden past for the first time of fleeing his country. The film received two British Academy Film Awards nomination last week. Jonas said the motivation behind his film was to remind people about life's true story and to depict the past coming alive. 40-year-old Danish filmmaker Jonas Pohe Rasmussen in his animated documentary Flea has told the story of his refuge friend's escape from Afghanistan whom he met when he was 15 years old. The film mixes animation with real historic archive footage of Afghanistan in the 80s as the Afghan teenager under the pseudonym Amin Nawabi recalls reliving past trauma and recounts his escape to the Scandinavian country on foot after his entire family was killed. Rasmussen said that he initially set out to tell the story about friendship secrets but post-2015 migrant crisis in Europe, his perspective changed. Amid the film's victorious launch, Afghanistan once again made the headlines last year as the Taliban took control and thousands of civilians strong Kabul airport seeking to escape, making the film sadly relevant all of a sudden, Rasmussen said. The film really was born out of uh, me being curious about my friend. I didn't think I want to do a refugee story and then, you know, went, went out and found a refugee. This was really about friendship just as much as about refugees, you know, and about having secrets. Um, and then, of course, when the refugee crisis hit, I think we were like a year or two into the process of making the film. Uh, my perspective kind of changed and I, I, I kind of felt a need to uh, give, you know, the, the, the refugees we saw on the highways in Denmark and the rest of Europe uh, a human face. The film received two British Academy of Film Awards nominations last week and has been shortlisted in the documentary feature and international feature film categories at the 2022 Oscars. And the mesmerizing winter season is at its peak in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory and tourists from across the country are flocking to experience its beauty and the winter chill. An igloo cafe that recently started operations in Gulmarg town has become the most talked about tourist attraction in the Union territory. An igloo cafe opened in Gulmarg town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir has become a new tourist attraction in the Union Territory. The cafe named Snooglu has been set up at the famous ski resort of Gulmark and is 37.5 feet tall and 44.5 feet in diameter. There are two sections in the igloo cafe, one for sitting and one for art space and wall carvings. The cafe has 10 tables and is spacious enough to accommodate 40 diners. It also has a staircase. The management claims that this is the biggest igloo cafe in the world and they have applied for the Guinness World Record. So its length and height is 37 and a half feet hai, aur iska diameter 44.5 feet hai. Isko 64 days lage hain complete hone mein aur kam az kam 1700 people ne isme contribute kiya over a period of 2 months. So, it is a local workforce. Hai. Because our local economy is uh, very uh, well, we to boost our local economy. Ko boost kare, because we all are dependent on interdependent economy. Hai. The cafe, with its unique concept, is also a delight for the tourists in the Union territory. I have heard that. जन्नत है कश्मीर कश्मीर को जन्नत बोलते हैं लेकिन हां यह जरूर जन्नत ही है आज मैं आई हूं यह इग्लू होटल में और यह वाकई जन्नत से कम नहीं है इधर आप देख सकते हो इधर बहुत हसीन नजारे भी है और होटल के साथ आप बहुत जलपान या और कुछ फैसिलिटीज भी आप अगर चाहो तो वो उसका लाभ ले सकते हैं Jammu and Kashmir is a well-known tourist destination for winter activities, making tourism as one of the mainstays of the region's economy. The tourism industry is trying to recover from the woes of coronavirus pandemic that struck the country since 2020. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.